stop right there. If you have a 3D printer, you're more than likely just throwing away things like failed 3D prints or support material that's come off of things that you've 3D printed because there's obviously nothing that you can do with this. Or maybe you have an almost empty roll of filament that has just barely enough filament in there for you to print anything and you're not sure what to do with it. Well, don't throw it in the garbage. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we can take all this excess garbage that we have, melt it down and pour it into a mold to make some artsy goodness out of our 3D printed waste. Now, I first heard about this over on TikTok and I ordered one of these skull molds off of Amazon that we can start stuffing some filament in and melting it down. And at a local arts and crafts store, I ended up finding some more silicone mold options. One is for these little cup molds and another is for these little diamonds or jewels that I figured we could try and work with. Plus, I thought maybe just maybe I could take one of my own 3D designs and try to create a 3D printed mold case that we can then pour our own silicone in to make our own silicone mold. Now this is probably not necessary, but I went off and bought a cheap discounted blender here for about 30 bucks at one of the low discount stores around town. And I figured I'm gonna use this to try and grind up some of the actual items that are larger in size to make it more easy for me to stuff into some of the molds and hopefully melt a little bit easier than some of the more solid pieces of filament. Also, if you wanna attempt this yourself, please do not use your mom's blender or your significant other's blender or one that you're planning on reusing. I will never be using this for anything other than this intended purpose. And I'm also gonna be making sure to wear safety glasses, but it's, uh, it's definitely blending it up here into something that's a good bit more manageable when it comes to being able to pour this into some of those silicone molds. Now I'm gonna be using one of these small kitchen ovens that we had sitting around not being used for like 10 plus years in my basement. So I busted it out and that's what I'm gonna be using to melt this down. Again, I'm not entirely sure how safe this would be for you to cook these in your actual oven that you'd be making uh, food with. So proceed with caution if you wanna try this out. I am gonna be only using PLA. I'm not using ABS or PETG. That's pretty much all I ever print with and definitely no resin. There's no way as far as I know to melt down resin and do anything like this. Also for a few of the molds, I have some of this Pearl X powdered pigments that I picked up from an arts and crafts store. So I'm gonna try sprinkling in some of that as well to give it a nice little glossy glintiness. I thought it would be really easy to get these stuffed. It's, it's really hard to get some of the smaller bits into the crevices here. And I'm not entirely sure how much I'm supposed to be filling this up, like just a tiny amount or should I fill the whole thing up or, or what? So I'm just trying to fit as much as I can into this for this first test with these. I've also coated a few of them with some different pigments there. And I'll do the same thing here for the skull. Obviously, this is like way easier to fill up. This was just <laughs> dumping a whole bunch in there and letting it settle to the bottom. So let's get this in there. So the skull is still in the oven baking away, melting down more filament. That thing is just way larger and takes significantly longer than the other molds that I have here. Yeah, these took about two hours or so of filling up filament, letting it melt down, filling up more, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna try and peel this. Oh, <laughs> very stiff and hard. So take a look at this, nice and shimmery thanks to that mica powder, or whatever that powder substance was that I brushed into the mold beforehand. And again, I can put like paint brushes or something in here. There's lots of little air bubbles and air pockets from the mold. I figure there's gonna be lots of imperfections in all of these. And the bottom here is way rough and not flat to sit evenly on your table, but still kind of cool. Half the fun of this is just peeling this away to see the results. Oh my God. Now this one actually might look really cool with the different color combinations. Oh my goodness. This one is, re I'm really digging this one. The color combinations of how this turned out look really cool. I can't get this out. Ugh. This is so cool. And this came from just wasted filament and filament scraps. I am so impressed with how this looks. Even with all the little divots and textures, this is really cool looking. All right, now let's try the, the diamonds. This should be, oh. 
That is so cool. So I took the skull mold out of the oven and let it cool down overnight so that we could get this demolded. However, before I could do that, I started to notice that the very top of the mold looks like it was starting to melt. So I immediately shut down everything and took this out and set it outside. If you're gonna attempt this, you really have to pay very close attention to it. You do not wanna risk a fire starting inside your premise. And please make sure that you have a fire extinguisher close by just in case. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is, that's really cool. Part of it kind of melted and didn't fill up all the way to the top. I think the results of this are still pretty wild and it's actually pretty heavy here. I've got a scale. So let me see exactly how much this weighs. And it looks like it's 11.8 ounces, which is a, a little under one pound, but still kind of amazing that all of that scrap of filament ended up weighing so much once fully compressed and melted down and just loving the different color combinations here of it all mixed together. So now that I've seen that this works using a mold that I bought online, I've 3D printed on my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, my own mold box that I've designed, actually a few different mold box options here in varying sizes that we're gonna test out pouring in some silicone so that we can replicate this process with your own unique designs. And while the mold boxes are printing, I wanna say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They are the makers of this Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. 3D printer that has a direct drive extruder, auto mesh bed leveling, and is extremely quiet when it's 3D printing. And the best part is it's currently available over on Elegoo's website for $230. That's an amazing price for a lot of features packed into this incredible 3D printer. If you're interested in more information about it, you can find links to that down below. Well, this video is starting to get a little long, so I'm gonna end up splitting it into two parts where the second half is gonna focus in on creating your own 3D printable mold boxes of things that you've designed and then be able to create your own silicone molds from these 3D printed mold boxes. And the reason why that's so important is, one, you can obviously do your own 3D designs and then melt your filament into that. But the other is that the silicone molds that you end up buying or making for yourself are gonna have a limited lifetime of usage because we're gonna be applying so much heat to them and pulling and stretching on these that you're only gonna get about three to five uses from them, or at least from what I've heard from other people that have more regularly done this. And for as much as these cost, you're gonna end up saving yourself so much money by being able to make your own, plus you'll have your own unique design. I also wanted to take a minute to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here on the channel. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find that over in my Patreon. And again, if you're planning on doing this, please make sure you're taking the proper safety precautions, like doing this in an extremely well-ventilated area, having a fire extinguisher nearby, and closely monitoring this as it's melting that filament. But let me know down below what you thought about this project and for sure you'll see more of me making things with 3D printing and mold making here in the future. I am so excited about this and I will for sure be sharing another follow up video here going into more details about making some of these 3D printable mold boxes. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Very stiff and hard.